All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. We're sitting over here in the Freedom Office uh, getting ready to talk about an article that came out by my good friend, John Crump. Cheers, John Crump. You're doing a great job. Uh, a true patriot in my book. Um, yeah, John Crump, you're so cool. FPS wins injunction against the ATF's pistol brace ban for plaintiffs, but not for you. And let's go back to that whole thing. I'm going to put the link downstairs to John Crump's YouTube channel. So please do me a favor and go over there and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Let's read this thing. Wichita Falls, Texas. The Policy Firearms Policy Coalition, otherwise known as FPC, Christopher Lewis of Maxim Defense, and William T. Mock won an injunction for the plaintiffs against the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, <laughs> And explosives. They had to add that at the end. Uh, new pistol brace rule. It goes on to say, alert. This is a tweet, a Twitter thing. The Fifth Circuit has issued an injunction pending appeal as to the plaintiffs in this case. Okay, as to the plaintiffs in this case in our lawsuit challenging the ATF's pistol brace rule. Stay tuned. Okay, so uh, firearmspolicy.org slash mock. Um, Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to read this to you. Uh, let's talk about this. The uh, William T. Mock, Christopher Lewis, Firearms Policy Coalition Incorporated, Maximum Defense. They are the plaintiffs going up against that dirtbag, uh, Merrick Garland. It is a true piece of POS, okay? Uh, they're... The bad thing about what's going on right now with the DOJ is that they have indeed weaponized themselves to go after political opponents, and it's just, and people just like the the the, the media. They're like, duh, I don't see nothing, nothing to see here, and it's absolutely incredible. Uh, <clears throat> per curiam, it is ordered that the appeal is ex expedited to the next available oral argument calendar. It is further ordered that the appellants appellants opposed motion for a preliminary injunction pending appeal is granted. Okay, so the injunction is granted to the plaintiffs in this case. All right, so pretty cool deal. All right, uh, this whole thing with the uh, the, the pistol brace. Um, if, if you remember, it was it was about maximum defense came out with it, and they had a, a firearm, and all of a sudden the ATF ruled that's a SBR, and that's when everybody went to shit with oh my gosh, well the uh, the SBA three brace and all the other stuff, and everybody was running around with their pistols, AR pistols. Man, I love mine just because it was such. So, well. You know what? I'm not worried about concealability as much as I'm worried about being able to be not noticed going in and out of hotels, right? So let's do this. The decision was handed down by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals three-judge panel this morning. That was yesterday. The panel consisted of two Donald Trump appointees and one George W. Bush appointee. Gotta love that GW. <clears throat> the panel is waiting to hear arguments in the Mock versus Garland case where the plaintiffs are taking on the ATF's new pistol brace rule that would reclassify millions of pistols equipped with a pistol stabilizing device uh, as short barrel rifles under the National Firearms Act. The change would mean millions of Americans could become felons on June 1, which is just a couple days away. When the window closes to the register, uh, destroy, modify, or turn in their firearm equipped with a pistol brace to authorities. Uh, I'm sorry, I had to look out the window real quick. <laughs> the injunction will protect the status quo until the appeals court can hear the case that has been granted expedited status. By granting the injunction, the court seems to indicate that they believe that the plaintiffs are likely to succeed on the merits of the case because it is one of the hurdles that must be overcome to receive an injunction from the court. Very, very exciting news to hear, right? So, <clears throat> I'm excited to hear this just simply because I, 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 I'm, I'm sick and tired of the ATF. I'm sick and tired of the DOJ. I'm sick and tired of this administration doing their damnedest to destroy our life, uh, our livelihood. Yeah, our livelihood. That's my livelihood behind me, as well as trying to take away your Second Amendment rights. Nicks, not even nicks at a time, one pin prick at a time. But they're taking axe chops at us now. The case claims that the new rule violates the Administrative Procedures Act because the ATF has no authority to make such a regulation. The plaintiff claim, plaintiffs claim that the ATF is sidestepping Congress and making a de facto law at the behest of the White House for political gain. Here we are again, ladies and gentlemen, political gain. That jackass, that old ass piece of turd that's sitting in the, it's, it's like a, 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 a toilet bath. 
That's what I call that whole organization. From Sweet Potato, Pierre, whatever the hell her name is, all the way up to freaking Kamala. Oh, don't even get me started. The Biden administration has openly opposed gun owners. Yes, in the Second Amendment, Biden's ATF has increased the revocation of federal firearms licenses by 500% for errors in paperwork under its zero tolerance policies. Okay, so let me explain something to you. Uh, in a very earlier video, I went and bought two shotguns, which, by the way, I have never seen a transfer fee cost 65 damn dollars. And I really didn't care at the time because I didn't have time. I just wanted to get it over and done with. But unfortunately, I'm just not can't I can't do that. And when I went to fill out the 4473, there were two little paragraphs, two questions on there that when I found out that uh, one of the old directors from the ATF, he misanswered it because it's so confusing. Well, they purposefully put this shit in there because you got to be a lawyer to understand what the hell they're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to do a video on that here in a little bit. P FPC is claiming that the ATF also is violating the rule of lenity. Lenity, the rule of, hell, let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. The rule of lenity states that if a law is ambiguous or unclear, it is, must be interpreted for the defense, the people, not the government. Yeah, thank you. The Fifth Circuit has taken on the rule of lenity in Cargill, Cargill versus Garland, where it ruled that Trump era bump stock ban violated the legal principle. It goes on to say Mr. Lewis, who owns Maxim Defense, will also likely show irreparable harm. Since the introduction of the new regulation, Maximum Defense Industries has had to fire 13 people since the market for the stabilizing pistol stabilizing devices and the brace firearms has tanked. If the race rule is allowed to go into effect, it could multiple could put multiple companies out of business, causing a loss of jobs. Talking to some insiders down there at the good old place at Palmetto State Army. They're involved in a bunch of stuff also. And if you go to their website, in all honesty, you're going to see the uppers. You're not going to see a whole lot of brace equipped lowers. A district court's judge ruled against the plaintiffs because the judge felt that there wasn't enough information to issue an injunction. The plaintiffs disagreed with the judge and appealed the case in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals for consideration. The appeal in the case has been expedited to the next available oral argument. And I don't know when that's scheduled for. Boom. Wait a minute. Nope. We don't know when it's scheduled for. All right, guys. So I'm sitting here at my desk when I got a phone call from my good friend, John Crump, who wanted to inform me that, yes, they have given them a date as to when we will find out if this injunction uh, applies to everyone or just them. OK, uh, it's going to be interesting. But the date is June 2nd, unfortunately, and that's kind of screwed up. Uh, however, remember, be talking about these guys right here, J.O.A. This will most likely benefit their case. So we'll see what's going to happen. So they're, they're going about it the right way. Uh, I'm glad that uh, John and I connected. I uh, just sent him a text message, let him know that I was going to do a video on his article as a courtesy because he is a really cool dude. So, again, I'm going to put the link down to the video. Uh, I mean, I'm going to put the link down to his YouTube channel. So if you would, please go subscribe. But it's going to be really interesting to see what happens after that. I mean, we're all rooting for these guys, man. Go! All right, even though the injunction only applies to the plaintiffs, it strengthens the case for the request for injunctions and temporary restraining orders, TROs. Gun owners of America, man, I should have worn my GOA hat. It's sitting right over there. And Texas have a case at the district court level and are asking for both a TRO and a preliminary injunction. The panel's decision might sway the district court's judge to issue a nationwide injunction. All right, cool. But here's the deal. And, John, you just ruined it forever. If a nationwide injunction isn't issued, the new rule will go into effect on June 1, and the window to register the pistol brace with a stabilizing device attached for a tax stamp with a forbearance on the $200 tax fee will be closed. So, yeah, this is a huge win for us, huge win for everybody. But I will tell you this. Uh, the Biden administration is the most evil thing I've ever seen. Uh, and people, I can't understand how in the world they still believe anything that comes out of that dude's mouth. It's absolutely disgusting. So with that being said, guys, uh, I think this is a good win. This is a good uh, start. It's in the right direction. I think that can, things will continue to uh, really go in yeah there are things are going in the right direction as far as i'm concerned so they got a couple days let's go ahead and do it so with that being said guys let me know what your thoughts are down below 
If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and hit right down so support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless men, women, in uniform 24 7 for our freedom because freedom is not free. I had to get this one out today. Uh, they, they don't care. And, and you know what? I, I just, I, I half the people who are want gun control, the only thing they know is uh, if you're a, home, a gun owner, if you're a gun owner, then you're a potential murderer. And that's kind of sad. Y'all be good. And the infamous words of the real Cobra burnout, I always like to say that, man, because the dude always had to boom. He did. Y'all be good. Boom. I'm out of here. Peace.